Good morning, my friends who have joined us. You are currently watching a paper wasp. To be specific, a European paper wasp. All right, you guys ready to start? I'll share this one more place here. And we're gonna get started. Look at that, it's 10.01. 10.01, I'm gonna put my lid on there. Hello, it is a wasp. Okay, let me turn my camera around here. Well, hello friends. Good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever, whenever you are watching this video. I'm so excited to talk about our topic today. But first, my name is Jenny Mitchell and I run the Insect Zoo at Iowa State University. And I'm also an entomologist. So what is an entomologist? An entomologist is a scientist who studies bugs. How cool is that? I know, it's super cool. Uh, but you know what? We don't only study bugs. No, we get to study the largest group of animals on Earth called arthropods. Can you guys say arthropod? It's a cool word, isn't it? Yeah, arthropods are animals. Did you know there are more arthropods on our planet than any other animal combined? Hey, Allie, I love you. I'm so happy you joined us today. So there are more arthropods on our planet than any other animal combined. My friends, more animals are arthropods than any other type of animal combined. But you know what? That's one of the reasons why I love arthropods. But what are arthropods? What makes them different? Well, the first thing that makes arthropods different than other animals, they have exoskeletons. What is an exoskeleton, my friends? You can answer. Oh, wait, we're on a video. You can't tell me. You can type it. An exoskeleton is a skeleton, but it's on the outside of the body. Now, do you have an exoskeleton? No, your bones are inside your body, so you cannot see them. Arthropods, their bones are right there on the outside. So if you want to look at their bones, you just have to look at them. And there are their bones. Super awesome. So what kind of animals are arthropods? Those are insects, spiders, tarantulas, millipedes, centipedes, scorpions, shrimp, crabs, and lobsters. So even some of those tasty little sea creatures you like to eat, they are very closely related to insects and also made of the same stuff. So eating shrimp or crawfish or crawdads, whatever you call them, uh, lobster, it's just like eating crickets. And if you'd like to eat some crickets, just let me know because I have some and my good friend Shelby also has some that you can purchase yummy flavored crickets. You can also watch our live on entomophagy, the eating of insects. Well, that was a couple weeks ago now, but you can go back and watch it. Okay, but we're not gonna eat bugs today. Today, this entomologist is going to talk about paper wasps. I love paper wasps, I really do. Paper wasps are super amazing. So when we did our first, or when we joined, when you joined, you may have seen our still of paper wasp, a paper wasp with the nest. So right in here I have, come on, come over here. 
Now, first, I want to make a disclaimer. I do not suggest that you walk up to a wasp and pick it up. Uh, I am a professional, and I do these kind of things every day, so I am going to pick up this wasp. This is also just a demonstration, though, on how paper wasps are not aggressive. So look, I've got him or her. This is a female. I've got her right in there in this cup. And so this morning, so yesterday I was going to collect paper wasps to bring in. But guess what? Iowa rain. That's what happened yesterday. So I was not able to go out and collect a paper wasp. But this morning when I woke up at 7 a.m., I had to remove a starling's nest from my house. They built their nest inside of the siding of my house. Yes. So I had to remove that this morning. And while I was up there, I saw this. Have you guys ever seen these hanging from somewhere? This is a paper wasp's nest. They are so cool. And it was pretty big. So I was like, I'm going to go when I'm done. I'm going to climb back up that ladder and I'm going to get that nest. I'm going to take it in even though I wasn't able to find a wasp. But guess what was on it? This wasp. He or she just knew that uh, I needed her today. And she was like, I'm just going to wait here for Jenny, the bug lady, to come and get me. And so that's what I did. Okay, so paper wasp. This is actually a European paper wasp. It was introduced to the United States in the 1970s. Is that right? I wrote it down because dates, me and dates, we don't get along very well. So I had to write down some notes. So I made sure that I got them right. Okay, so this was introduced to the United States, to North America in 1970, about 1970. And it started on the East Coast. Thanks, Boston. And it was brought over from Europe. So how do you think it made it over here? Well, it was probably in shipping containers. And I'm really surprised it didn't come over sooner. Because the paper wasp, they love boats. Why do they love boats? Because, well, they used to be made out of primarily wood. And paper wasp, they build their nest with wood. Can't you see his little saw and his little hammer and the nail? No, that's not how they build it with wood. They actually will chew it up. They chew it up so they have chewing mouth parts. And they chew and chew and chew and chew and chew on wood. And they mix it with their saliva. And it makes sort of a palp. And my kids and I, we have watched them do this. It is so cool. And then they take that back to their nest and they spit it out and they put it all together to make these awesome, awesome paper wasp nests. They're so cool. So how do you know if you have a paper wasp? So if you look at this paper wasp, let me get him actually out or her. I keep calling him a him, but I know it's a her. So most right now, the only wasp you will see are females. They only make males in the fall because the only thing that the males are used for is for mating. Come here, my friend. She is just like, so she's moving away from me. So I'm putting my finger in there and you know what she's doing? She's moving away from it. She's not like, I'm going to sting you. Paper wasps are not aggressive. In fact, the majority of the time, if you get stung by a paper wasp, it's because you were poking its nest with a stick or something else, your finger. They are not going to attack you. Ask my husband, ask my children, our deck, our little porch on our back porch, it, the wood is not treated. So it's the perfect place for these wasps to get pulp to make their nest. So we have lots and lots of wasps and they come into our house. Come here, my friend. We're not, we're just going to be friends. Do you want to be friends? Yeah, there we go. We can be friends. There we go. So they come into our house and it's just right into our kitchen. And so we almost always have a wasp in our kitchen. 
Now, look at this. This is crazy, right? You think this is crazy? Well, she doesn't have a nest right now. So this is probably a worker. And because yesterday was, because she's smaller. So if she was a queen, then um, she would be larger. So what happened was, what probably happened was, this is an old nest. So most of the time, you want to come up here? Most of the time, they do not reuse a nest. Like, total majority of the time. They do not reuse a nest. So what probably happened is because yesterday in Iowa, it was super windy. We had, um, it was overcast all day, but it was kind of warm-ish, um, about between 50s and 60s. And then we had a huge thunderstorm. So what probably happened is this worker needed somewhere to rest from the storm. And then it ended up getting dark. And when it gets too cold, these animals cannot fly. Okay, it has to be warm enough for them to be able to fly. So what probably happened is it it found this old spent nest up on under um, the awning of my house and it just rested there. And so this morning it was still really chilly out so she couldn't fly. So I was able to capture her and now we've just become such best friends that she is okay. She's just chill. I'm also like a bug whisperer. Okay, so again, kids, do not try this kind of stuff at home, okay? Please do not try to pick up a paper wasp. So um, paper wasps do sting. At the end of the abdomen right here, let me find, I did not get a uh, anchor. Here, you know what? We're going to switch over here real quick so that you guys can see. I'm going to turn this around. Let's get this. No, I did not rotate my phone. There we go. Okay. Check this out. Okay, so she has a stinger. You see at the end of the abdomen there? You need to go up just a little bit higher. We are low budget, my friends. Low budget. Okay. You see her stinger there at the end of her abdomen? I conveniently have this little poker right there. Can you see that? So at the end of her abdomen is a stinger, and inside that stinger is venom. They have these little venom glands that store and then pump out the venom. So why do they have venom? Well, it's to protect their nest, which is another reason why she may be so super calm, because she doesn't have her nest that she is supposed to be protecting. So let's explain this nest real quick. So each one of these holes is called a cell. And it started off with just one. It was probably somewhere in the center here. Oh, we can look for the back. So this is where it attaches to the structure. So like a tree or um, your grill or under your roof. They like to nest in dark areas, shady areas, or in some sort of a crevice. So this is where the nest started. So it started right here and then it built on, built on, built on. And it started with just like one or two of these little cells. And it was just the queen who started it. That queen made it the previous fall and overwintered by herself. And then when spring came, she started going out and collecting insects. That's right. They eat insects. They are a predator that the dead insects to their larva. So their larvae eat dead insects. Now this is one of the reasons why paper wasps are a beneficial insect. So they are eating insects out of your garden. The bad insects like caterpillars that want to eat all your cabbages. I'm talking about those cabbage white butterflies. They start out as a caterpillar that feeds on plants. Also other plant pests. So they collect those insects and they mush them up and they bring them back to the little larvae that live in here. So wasps go through a complete metamorphosis, egg, larva, pupa, adult, just like our butterflies and our beetles and our ants. 
they have complete metamorphosis or they go through a completely big change. So the female queen, she'll lay eggs in here, just one egg per cell, and it'll hatch and it'll be a little wormy larva. And that larva cannot go anywhere, nowhere. It relies on its mom, the queen, to feed it. Now, once she gets enough adults, she does not take care of those babies anymore. She doesn't go out and get dead insects to feed the larvae. She will stay on her comb here. She'll stay right in there. And then the workers will go out. But before they come workers, they have to grow really big, so big that they fill up this cell. And look how deep these cells are. You can see this is the bottom here and it goes all the way up to here. Those are deep cells. So it fills up those cells, the larva, and then it's going to turn into a pupa and paper will be, a paper flap will be placed over this. And you can see the startings of them over here. Now I do have another one right here that has an actual flap. Hey Frankie, it's good to see the, see your name there. Okay, check it out. So here's one that I picked up at a gas station. It was on the ground. So I was pumping gas. This was last year. Okay, you see that little cap there? So honeybees do the same thing, except theirs is made out of wax. So these guys, these ones are made out of paper. Okay, so this is closed, let's say, and inside the larva is pupating. It is changing, and then it'll emerge and it'll chew its way out of the sea here. You can see that some of these were chewed on. It'll chew its way out of it and come out as an adult. Here's our adult right here. Let's see if I can get her just to walk around a little bit. What do you think? Hmm? She might need something to eat. So, and they do also, will, they will also eat nectar. So they can be considered a pollinator. Now we call them a paper wasp because they do make these amazing paper nests. Um, but you want to hear some history about how paper was made? So I looked this up and I have some notes. Okay, so first of all, the first actual paper was invented by the Chinese in about 105 AD. That's a really long time ago, friends. And they would make it out of... Um, fibers like the fabrics that they were using. So they'd shred these up into little pieces and silks. Um, but then that became too expensive, right? So that was really, really expensive. And this spread though, this spread throughout, um, it was, uh, throughout the Middle East, but it was all kept a secret. And then somebody observed these paper wasps making nests. And they saw that they were gathering the pulp from wood. And then they'd fly back and they'd add it to this. So they thought maybe instead of using materials like your old nightgown or your old bed sheet, that's what they used to make paper with. Um, some do still do. It's still used. But instead of doing that, maybe we could make it out of wood. And so that's what they started to do. So that totally changed paper. Isn't that amazing? And it was partially because of these little creatures right here. These guys taught humans that you could use the pulp from wood to make paper. Do you see the things that we can learn from nature? Isn't that amazing? So amazing. Now we wouldn't have discovered that if we wouldn't have been paying attention and observing those animals that are different than us. Okay, so this one is a European paper wasp and it was introduced 
uh, around 1970 and probably in Boston first. And that's because it was coming over on ships from Europe and it would build its nest on these wooden ships or it would build them up into the shipping containers. So that's probably how it was brought over. A nest would have been brought over on something that was being shipped over here and then it established there in Boston. You know, right now there's about 20 to 25 species in North America alone. I've, there are different numbers um, for this. I saw 20, I saw 22, I also saw 24. So um, scientists, we just can't agree on everything. Most of those are not native. Most of those were not here originally. They were introduced from somewhere else. You know, worldwide, there could be up to 1,100 species or kinds of paper wasp. Right now, there's only about 300 that are described, but we have not found all the bugs on our planet yet. We find new ones all the time. So what should you do if you have paper wasp around your home? Or how do you keep paper wasp away from your home? Well, if you have unfinished wood outside like we do on our deck, that's going to attract the paper wasp. So easy solution, seal that wood. Um, if your paper wasps are not bothering you, if you just see a nest and you're like, oh, look at that paper wasp nest. And you just realized it was there and it's like this size or even this size, then that paper wasp has lived there for a long time and it never bothered you. Again, the only time a paper wasp is really going to sting is if you are poking and prodding its nest. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've had this paper wasp sitting here for a very long time. And it's not trying to do anything at all to me. I think it does need a little bit of honey. I'm going to get some honey to get it. So you don't need to really be afraid of paper wasps. However, they are venomous and some people can be allergic to them. So if they're in a in an area, I'm just getting some honey here. I've got this is some ooh, sour wood honey. This is good honey, by the way. Um, if they are in a high traffic area, an area where okay, you're not gonna come out. An area where there are a lot of people running around, then you can remove it with a pesticide spray. Now, I always say use this as a last resort. We live in harmony with our paper wasps at our house, even though they like to visit inside of our kitchen every now and then. You want some of that? Yeah. Oh, look, she's eating the honey. You just needed a little pick-me-up. Isn't that so cute? Yep. Can you see that? It's awesome. Okay, let me finish. So you can use a pesticide spray, or you can call a professional. Um, if you're using a pesticide spray, you want something that sprays long range. And you also want to do it in the evening time because that's whenever most of them are um, going to be home. They're going to be settled down. If you can do it when it's cool out. Um, or you could do it in the middle of the day when it's super, super hot and there's barely any wasps around. But you want to try to stand as far away as possible and spray that in there. Um, you can also call a professional. Um, how can you live in harmony with these amazing animals? Well, one thing you could do is you could encourage them to nest in a certain area. Yeah, have you guys seen uh, people building um, bee habitats? So they make these little bee nests. And that encourages things like leaf cutter or, um, sorry, uh, uh, orchard mason bees um, leaf cutter bees, all those sorts of bees to come and nest in these little, little holes. So you can do that with the wasps. So if you build like a little box that kind of looks like a bird box or birdhouse, um, 
about four by four box with an opening on a on the bottom and attach it to a pole or say a tree um, pretty high up not super super high up but um, way taller than you are and that will help encourage the wa the paper wasps to nest in an area where you want them to nest why is that good because you can put them somewhere that is out of your way, somewhere that's not a high traffic area like above your kitchen door, which is where all of our paper wasp nests. Look at her, she's loving that honey. Now I had to get different honey. This is uh, first place honey from Kansas State Fair, which I judge. So this is first place dark honey. She's liking that honey there. Give her a little bit of energy. There you go, my friend. Now she's going to try to fly away. What do you think? Mm, that is good honey. Okay, now I wanted to show you, because um, when we did our last live, I asked you if it was okay if I showed you some pictures of some because I can't have like I'm some of these I just don't have okay blue nest yes so you can actually give so there's scientists and there's even scientists here at Iowa State that do this so you can give the wasp um, colored paper and they will make their nest with it so I've seen ones that are rainbows that are red all sorts so here I pulled up some pictures of other paper wasps that are found in the United States. So this is one that is called a red wasp. And this is, well, that's a common name for it. It is a paper wasp. Um, this one is native to the United States. So this is one that you might found. It's, it's um, most common in Eastern and South Central United States. Um, let's see, we have another one here. This is a, uh, northern paper wasp is what this one is. That's a really good picture of them with their nest. Now, I was trying to find ones that were native. So this, again, is the northern paper wasp. Again, there's like 23, about 23 species. There it is again. So this one is native to the United States. So depending on where your area is, you're gonna have different kinds of paper wasps. But in general, paper wasps are not aggressive. So when I see people all the time who are like, I have these paper wasps, how do I get rid of them? Well, my first question is, where are they? So if they're out behind my garage, someplace where I very rarely go, like I only go if I'm mowing, um, I'm totally not worried about them. As a common citizen, somebody who's not the bug lady, okay? So I'm not gonna worry about them at, at all. But if they're right above my back door and they're flying into my kitchen all the time like they do at my house, um, and I'm just, a, a regular neighbor, I'm not me, um, then I would want to remove them. So you can do that in many ways. You can use the insect, the insecticide, like I said, the wasp spray from a long distance away. That's going to kill them. They're going to be dead. There's another way. You can also just pick off the nest. So you can kind of watch the nest. And when you don't see any away or around there, then just go up and knock it right off. I just broke this right off. And then you can go set this somewhere else out of the way. And this is what's gonna happen. So either they are gonna let everything die on its own, or the queen is gonna find it. They're gonna keep taking care of it. You have a better chance of saving it if it's little. Um, or you could go ahead and just put it up somewhere high if you can find uh, someplace high to put it out of the way, then it's more likely to survive. So, or you could go to the extreme and you could be like me and my house 
I don't do anything about the paper wasps. I let them live in harmony with us, with our family, with the outdoors. And when I find them in the kitchen, when they visit in our kitchen, they fly right to the window because they want to go outside. They are attracted to that light. So we, I use a paper towel um, or uh, I use a paper towel. I'll get two paper towels and I'll fold it in half and then I'll fold it in half again to make a thick square. And now the paper wasp is in the window and so I just go up with my paper towel and I put it right on there. I pinch it softly so that it's just being held gently in there. I go, I open my back door and I open it up and the paper wasp just flies out. So that's how I take care of them. Um, the only time I've ever been stung by a paper wasp was when I was trying to take its nest down. So I even gave a paper wasp to my five-year-old son on his finger one day when we were watching it gather pulp. Actually, this was last summer, so he's four. We were watching it gather pulp from our porch. We were right there, right close to it and watching it. And I went up and I picked it up. And I said, you want to hold it? And he said, yeah. So I let it crawl on his finger. It was just fine. Now, I do not suggest you do that unless you are with somebody who knows what they're doing like me. Because you could be allergic to a paper wasp sting. So, but here's a disclaimer. If you're allergic to honeybees, it doesn't mean you're allergic to everything else that stings. You could be just as much as me, who's not allergic to any stinging insect, could be allergic to some stinging insect. So, uh... She's, so I dripped some uh, honey on that nest there, and there she is just gobbling it up. Can you see her? That's so cute. It's so fun to feed these animals. So fun. So there are other ways that you can get rid of them. Um, also, you can, um, you can call somebody. And some pesticide companies will be more humane so if you ask them to not use an insecticide to instead remove the, the wasp nest, instead of using an insecticide, um, some companies will do that, okay? So you can call around and find out which ones will do that because I do not use any sort of pesticide at all in my yard ever. So um, I'm really against that. So I know that some other people are too. So if I was not able to do it myself, I would want a pest control company that would remove it without pesticides. Because once that is dead, those wasps are gone if you use a pesticide, right? So you spray this, but guess what sticks around? The pesticide. It's gonna be there for a long time. It's gonna get into whatever was below it. It can absorb into the ground. So pesticides are not fun and we need to use them sparingly. And for some paper wasps, it's not something that we really need to use them for. Okay, so I see we have a question about yellow jackets. So I'm gonna start talking about a different wasp every day. Well, not every day, you know what I mean, right? So next week, Monday, we have a insect zoo student who is going to do the Facebook Live, Emma. I'm excited to see what she has to say. And then Wednesday, we have another insect zoo student doing the Facebook Live. That is going to be uh, Maddie. Maddie is doing it on Wednesday. And so then on Friday, I'm going to talk about another wasp. And I'm not quite sure which kind yet. So I ordered this book about a month ago about wasps. And I like to get my information from actual books or papers, not just Google, right? So um, I've been waiting for this book about wasps uh, so that I can do some more research um, for these wasps. And it just has not come yet. It's been like a month. So I'm waiting patiently for this book. But next Friday, I think we're going to go ahead and talk about the giant Asian hornet, which some of you may have um, seen the, on the news it's being called the murder hornet. We are not going to call it the murder hornet. So um, the giant Asian hornet, I think we're going to talk about that one. And 
the European Hornet, which has already been here for a while, okay? So I think we're going to talk about the giant Asian Hornet and the uh, European Hornet that has been here, again, for a while. That's going to be next Friday. So I'm going to make some events for the next three lives. And uh, yeah, and then you can suggest what type of wasp do you want me to talk about next? So we're going to talk about all different types of wasps and hornets. Um, so yellow jackets, bald face hornets, um, giant Asian hornet, uh, European hornet, um, all these different types of wasps. That's going to be fun because I love wasps and bees. And then eventually we'll talk about bees. I have a feeling that we're going to be doing this all summer long. So we're going to have lots of videos. All right, my friend, guess what? I know that that one was, this live is a kind of a short one, but I think that's where we're moving towards is talking about one animal. And so our lives are going to be a little bit shorter, but it's going to be full of so much information and you can watch it again if you want to later. So that's all that we're going to talk about today. If you guys have any questions about paper wasps, you can ask, you can send me a message right here on Facebook, or you can email me zoo at iastate.edu. I love getting your questions. And um, yeah, so my friends, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you on Monday when we have the insect zoo student, Emma, come in and talk about her favorite bugs. So my friends, go forth and love the bugs.